So I'm going to take a look at Drupal 8's new multilingual features. It's been a big initiative on that uh, throughout Drupal 8. And uh, I'm actually, so I'm going to do this from the, the installation screen because you can install a different language uh, during installation normally in Drupal. And you obviously still can. This is actually the first screen though. Um, in the past, you would choose a profile and then you would choose a language. So that's cool. And also, I just want to point out, since um, Kyle did his video just a few weeks ago, the installer screen looks totally different. Um, so that was something... Um, new that just uh, just got in uh, right before code freeze, I guess. So um, so cool. We have a new installer, so we can also look at. Uh, but I do want to play with the multilingual stuff. So I can choose a language to actually install Drupal in. Uh, I'm going to do Danish because uh, I happen to know a little bit of Danish, so I can still kind of get around um, in that language because this is going to install Danish, you know, as my normal default uh, language um, in here. And it's interesting too because um, it's it's just going to download the translation for me rather than telling me how to do that manually. So I'm curious if that really works, especially with Drupal 8. Um, let's see what happens here. Oh, wow. Sweet. Yep, that's totally Danish. Um, nice. Um, so I'll just go ahead and do a normal installation, but now my entire installation is going to be in Danish, so that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, and it looks like a lot of this has been um, translated already. Um, or it's, I guess maybe it's just similar enough to what it was in Drupal 7 that the Drupal, uh, we'll have to look and see which translation files we actually got here. Um, but anyway, let me, uh, let me go ahead and do this. Yes, I use root for my local host installations. So we can see there's a little bit of English still in here. Um, but that's to be expected. I get the translations for all of Drupal core aren't going to be done because we don't translate until, you know, all the code is stopped moving and the strings are still. So uh, there's definitely going to be some Danish and some English uh, in here because I'm sure the Danish translation doesn't cover everything yet. But, you know, that's just, you know, fair enough. That makes sense. So it got all the installation done and now it's pulling in. Ah, so maybe it just pulled down the installation translations and now this is for the rest of the site uh, like Drupal core maybe not sure sweet um, cool yeah so it imported the translation stuff obviously again a uh, bunch of this is in English but um, yeah let's just I'm gonna hurry up through this screen we don't need to actually talk through this part I guess Oh, okay. And more translations. Cool. It's nice that I don't have to actually go and figure out where the stuff is or where I need to download or anything like that. It's just managing it for me directly as long as I'm connected to the internet, right? So that's pretty sweet. Cool. So installation definitely took a little bit longer because it had to kind of go out and, and grab translations and, and, and install them and do all that stuff, but it did it all for me. So I'm cool with that for sure. So let's actually go look at the site and see what's going on there. All right, so I have my welcome screen and um, yeah, so again, as I said, we have like a mixture, but obviously the Danish is, is what's uh, being used here and, um, and it's the default language um, I don't have, uh, you know, like I'm not at uh, D8 slash uh, DA for the language code or anything like that. Um, so let's go look in the menus, um, configuration, um, and then, so Spolt is language in Danish. Um, so the first thing I want to do, just as I'm walking other people through this, I'm sure most people don't speak Danish or read Danish, so um, I do want to also add English as a language here, I imagine. But um, but let's say I want, you know, if I'm doing this in Danish, I want Danish to be the default language in it, um, which is interesting. So I'm going to look in languages and see if I can figure out what's happening in here. Okay, so this is my Danish is installed, but it, notice there is no English actually installed. I can't even switch to it right now. I can't switch to English. Um, for anybody who's worked on sites in the past, um, you always had English on your site. So that's pretty cool. You could actually make a site with just just a language uh, that's not English, which is new and really cool um, 
for people who need that because sometimes the English just kind of gets in the way and is unnecessary. So I'm going to add English as a language though. Uh, let's see. Just uh, to make it easier for, for those who are following along in the video so that you can actually kind of read and see things uh, in the interface a little better. And again, man, it's just like going and getting it for me. Well, I guess English is there. You don't have to go get English, right? That's just in Drupal core. Yeah, duh. Okay. So, um, so cool. So we have, I have English. I wonder how do I switch to English? <laughs> um, let's see, there's this detection and choice. So this is like the, um, how it decides the language, language detection settings, which are included. So it's doing it by URL. So I, I can probably just type EN in my URL. Um, or if I selected, oh, right. So if I changed the language, the site language to English, they don't have a, um, I wonder, you know, in, um, well, let me, first of all, so uh, the default is uh, by URL. So if I type EN in my uh, URL, so I'm just at my site slash EN. See, that switches it to English. So I can use it that way. Um, I wonder if they have a, the language switcher, switcher block though. Cause you know, like you can have a little block and it'll like pick your language, blah, 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 or something like that. But, um, that's a contrib module. So, um, no, I don't see a language switcher block. So that's probably still going to be a contrib thing or. You know, I don't know. I don't know how many people actually use language switcher blocks, but anyway, I'm on, in the English interface because I put it in the uh, in the URL to switch to English. But it's really interesting because if I just go to the root of my site, it's going to be in Danish. Like that's the default. So cool. Okay. So let's see what other configuration options we have with the language stuff. That because again, this is all core, and I know one of the things that they said is that they were putting more stuff into core. So. Oh, right. So here's my default language. I could switch that to English if I wanted. Um, I don't need to change this for you guys, but I just feel compelled to actually switch it properly. Um, okay. So this is just locale, right? This is like not actual language per se. It's more like what are the, the default location stuff that's going on? Uh, let's go back here. So regional settings I did. Languages we looked at, right? So this is I can add languages and it just downloads and installs them for me. Um, I can change the detection and selection stuff. Um, what if I configure this? What can I do? Oh, right. So I can say which, so right. This is what I type to get Danish. That's how I got to the English was just typing this in there. Um, right. So these are similar settings to what we've had in the past. Um, wow. Oh. Language setting for the account administration pages. Nice. Okay, so that's that stuff. Let me go, I'm just gonna poke around here a little bit. Date and time formats. User interface translation. Uh, so this is, right, you know, this is similar to the, just this is for the configuration, like interface translation stuff. Um, so strings that are in core, and uh, what is the, the language? So you can see where like some of this has been translated to Danish already because I'm in Danish, but I, if I could wanted to go through and translate more of these, I could start to put those in. Um, cool. Let's see what else we have here. So right, this is how I can actually manually import, but it's doing this automatically. But if I need to manually import stuff, let's see about export. Right, cool. And what settings do we have here? Oh, so this is like checking for updates on my language, making sure that if, if there's um, on uh, the localization site where the translations came from, if there are changes, it will let me know that. So that's pretty sweet. Um, yeah, nice. Okay. Um, so that all looks normally. Um, and then content language. So this is for the actual content, like nodes and things like that. Um, hmm. This should be in English, but this is definitely Danish. <laughs> and this is Danish. So, hmm, yeah, that's interesting. But, um, so custom language settings, 
by default. Okay, so by default, there's no language selector, but if I wanted to add a language selector, cool. So they have language settings for users, custom blocks, content, comments, menu links, and taxonomy, like built into core. Well, that's slick. Let me turn this stuff on for content. Ooh, ooh, cool. All right, so for articles, oh, I can set like what the default is for the content. Okay, so there's Danish and English, which we know about. Not specified, not applicable, size default, current interface and author's preferred language. Nice, that's pretty flexible. I'm assuming this is just, you know, like for the defaults, right? Show language selector on create and edit pages. Oh, nice. Okay, so, so the default, like for articles could be Danish or, you know, that's setting or the site's default language is Danish, right? So if I wanted to switch to something else, but not specified and not applicable. So I guess not specified means it is a language, but we're not specifying it. Not applicable means a language doesn't apply to it. There, like an image maybe wouldn't have a language applicable. That makes sense. Nice. So that's, that's more flexible than what we've had. And it's all built in the course. Sweet. Um, so, and if I do this, yeah, let's just save that and see what happens. Um, all right. So if I go to create content, I'm just curious what happens here. If I create an article, what's this look like? Okay, cool. I have a language selector. So just at the default and then I can pick, pick the others if I want to for it. Nice. Um, I'm curious about the menu, menu thingy. So if I go to menus, edit a menu. Cool. Nice. Languages list page. Oh, right. That's the Danish and English. Okay. Oh, so I can set it here. So, ah, okay. So like if I go in to a particular menu item, I'm not going to get that selector. Right. So, so on the menu, you know, like the container for it, I can um, pick what this menu's language will be, but I can also like show the language selector for each individual item in there if I want, but I have to check that. Ah, I got it. All right. Let me do this and just see how this works. And then edit. And then here's the language. Nice. That's too, wow, there's a lot of nice stuff. I mean, for, for me, I haven't done a lot of, honestly, with multilingual stuff. I played with it a little bit, but there's just more stuff baked into core. Um, and it all, there's just, one of the problems I always found with working with multilingual stuff is there were sort of just a lot of contrib modules and lots of different pieces and even different ways of getting it done. And it seems like this is so much more streamlined, like a lot of things are in core and it's done this way, which makes trying to figure it out and work on it seem so much simpler. I mean, multilingual is not simple, don't get me wrong, but still, this is pretty awesome. So, um, okay, cool. Nice, very nice stuff. So that's, yeah, that's like a quick tour of, of what's, I'm sure I've missed some other things that are cool that are going on with this, but, uh, but neat, neat work that's been going on on multilingual. So um, I'm curious to see um, if they are going to keep making any more changes or what else is going on. But this is a huge improvement from Drupal 7 in terms of dealing with multilingual. And I'm curious to see what stuff will come up in the contrib world because some of the stuff from like I18N module and stuff like that, internationalization module, um, are now in here. But obviously there's still going to be other pieces that are missing. Um, so I'm sure there's still going to be a lot of contrib, but it looks like the core multilingual features and sort of API that's happening is, is centralized and streamlined and, and solid. Um, so hopefully that will also make the contrib space a lot less confusing. So nice. Kudos. Um, well, uh, thanks for following me on my pointy clicky journey and, um, I will see you guys again in the future. Bye.